name of the show is Outlook Africa, and this is a show where we look at social political issues uh, affecting Africa and the Black diaspora. So today we are looking at um, an issue that, uh, because uh, you know we are a general interest station, and we have always uh, uh, had people call us to inquire about. You know, why is uh, Vibes Cartel uh, still producing music and uh, doing everything that he's doing like he's not in jail? And uh, we felt that there was a big elephant in the room that needed to be addressed. And uh, that is something that uh, we want to address to see um, if there definitely, if there's a, there's a reason why um, it is necessary for him uh, to still be uh, in in, uh, in in music and collaborating and 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 going on like uh, everything is fine. So I'm going to uh, start with um, the introductions. Uh, we have uh, let's start with the young man, Mr. Dave Doyen. Uh, Dave Doyen is here with me in Toronto, Canada. Uh, he's a diversity and inclusion consultant. Uh, who has worked uh, both in private and uh, public uh, in the private and public sectors? Uh, he's a leading social justice uh, fellow with uh, the uh, University of Toronto, and he also does work with the United Way of the Greater Toronto. And he's a young man uh, that uh, is in, in, in very interested in uh, uh, social justice issues. And uh, yeah, you're welcome, Dave, to Outlook Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have Mr. Lloyd Lang. Lloyd Lang is joining us from Kingston, Jamaica. And Mr. Lang is a radiologist. He is the, um, the host of the world's number one uh, reggae music history podcast on uh, Apple iTunes. Uh, Mr. Lang is also a, media, a music media consultant at reggaedata.com and a research fellow at the Institute of Cultural Policy and Innovation. Mr. Lloyd Lang, um, that is a very... We're good, and uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, your wealth of knowledge on uh, reggae and the history will serve us well uh, for this discussion. Welcome to I'm Outlook looking, Africa. Thank you so much. You. Now, last but not the least, and it's our very... Uh, esteemed pleasure to have Mr. Grams Morgan join us. Mr. Morgan is a, a member of uh, Morgan Heritage and uh, of course Morgan Heritage is a Grammy nominated group uh, whose hits include Down by the River, Perfect Love, She's Still Loving Me, Tell Me How Come, amongst a host of others. Now, not only that, Mr. Grant Morgan is also a solo artist, and uh, you can check him out on um, all available uh, music, uh, where you get your music, and we are going to be uh, uh, putting that on, uh, on the screen later for you, but Mr. Morgan, uh, Grant Morgan is, uh, is a solo artist uh, that uh, that uh, has uh, has been part of the Morgan heritage and is breaking out on his own and you're going to be hearing from him. Mr. Morgan, welcome to Outlook Africa. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, if I may start with you, uh, uh, Grams. Um, as an artist and um, a conscious artist, because your music tends to be, uh, if, I, if I'm correct, a bit cultural, a bit lovers rock, reggae, more on that on that genre than 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 uh, dancehall. Am I am I am I correct in saying that? Yes, I would say ninety five percent of it. But Morgan Heritage has done and dabbled in dancehall a little bit with people like Bounty Killer, Buju Bantan, Sizzla Kalanji. So we dabbled in dancehall, but ninety five percent conscious and. Even when it is dance, all the lyric. Yes, and we and we enjoyed all of it. 
<laughs> too. So uh, now, with that in mind, um, just wanted to get your perspective on uh, what the topic of discussion today, as much as you can. Um, Vibes Cattell, he is quite a phenomenal dancehall artist who has been uh, uh, in the in the in the industry for quite some time. Very very influential. He was indicted uh, on murder charges and eventually convicted. Now we're not going to go into all that because that for me is settled. The only issue that one has right now is his continued participation and success in the in the industry. Uh, uh, some people look at it like he's not he's not really paying the price for what he's supposed to have uh, the crimes that he has supposed to have uh, committed. And uh, what does this say about the the music uh, the the reggae industry itself, and of course. Uh, the larger Jamaican judicial system? Well, first of all, that um, situation we talk about with Vibes Cartel being able to make music, um, I guess it's part, part of his whole rehabilitation kind of thing because they have programs in, in prisons all over the world that do the same thing. However, I do believe, I don't know a lot about the case, but I think that that was part of his sentencing, that he would be allowed to make music, to make money to pay back um, to the families of the departed, that uh, the, the murder victim that was, uh, I think his name was Screechy, I forgot his name, but I'm sure the encyclopedia, leg no, not the full lyrics. Cl Clive <laughs> Lizard Williams, Clive Williams. Yeah, Lizard, Lizard. So, my opinion on that is that the Jamaica judicial um, system, when it comes to, wait, I say, rehabilitating an artist that they thought that would be best and be a, a part of it. So that's up to the, the government, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a fan of Vibes Cartel, number one. I'm a fan of his, his, his lyric, his artistry as an artist. Vibes Cartel, when he was in prison, while he's in prison now and before he went to prison, he always knew that I didn't like some of his lyrics. But there are lyrics out there that he's talking about, a lot of realistic messages and conscious messages. And I think, I me mean, personally, I think the best of him is yet to come. I think he, I hope that he prays, I, I pray and hope that he awakens and, and comes from this a better man, a better father, because when a man has time to reflect, he has time to reflect on his past, his present, and his future. That's uh, that's a very uh, uh, positive uh, uh, look on on it. Uh, what we are referring to is the rehabilitation tr through music program. That uh, is a program that the Jamaican uh, 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 prison system offers to uh, people that are incarcerated and that uh, are musically inclined. Uh, the report yes. is that he uh, he declined uh, to participate in it. Uh, someone like Jack Kyo was uh, was uh, a, a very successful participant in that program. Um, yes. Let's uh, move uh, to uh, Mr. Leg. Uh, same question to you. Um, you're there in Jamaica, and I'm sure that uh, you probably were aware of uh, uh, you. You lived through his. Uh, uh, the process of uh, uh, he's going through the process of uh, uh, being indicted and eventually being jailed, and you understand what was on the ground there in Jamaica in terms of the feeling of the people. Uh, can you uh, let us know uh, how what was that about and how is it being looked at presently in Jamaica? Vibes Cartel is simply as well music in itself is an echo chamber. Let's just start there first. It is a reflection of the society. It's an, it's, a, and it's, it's, a, it's an echo of what society reflects onto the artist. The artist can only put on canvas what he's inspired by. Now, way before there was Vibes Cartel and the start of this conversation about whether he should be doing in prison or how he's doing it, it's a technique that we saw popping up in hip hop from the mid 90s where people were you know, doing their mixtapes via over the phone. So people found creative ways, as, as you do as an artist and creative, to get your art or your expression out there. And um, what Cartel 
uh, has been doing or, or is alleged to be doing is, is probably using the same technique. And I wouldn't see it any different because dance hall itself is a reflection of, of urban music. So this is a technique that, you know, the Sher Murders and the Shines and all of these other people have been doing way before Cartel even graduated from school. Um, it's a reflection of, of, of our music on, on, as a whole and on a global society. Now, coming back to Cartel currently in, 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 in this iteration and what he's doing, you know, as Graham said, it was a part of his um, sentencing agreement uh, because he was forced at one point to, to, to provide restitution and he's still doing so with every single song that he's putting out. Um, I think the argument that has always aligned itself with Cartel is the moral and ethical lyrical content which Graham spoke to and say, you know, I love Cartel, I enjoy his music. I think he is uh, one of the one of the 21st century's most um, creative and if not uh, um, talented artists that have cropped out, out of Jamaica. But like with everything and with every art, there will be questionable judge points where people who are inside the box and outside the box might have malaligned ideas. But um, for what he's doing and, and what Cartel is doing, my point only comes down to the, to the, to the echo of, uh, in the society that he's creating by the lyric. Because for me, some of it is, is, is questionable. But besides from that, um, it's a creative experience. And I think, you know, if, if Cartel didn't do it, somebody else would have been doing it. And, you know, it, it, it is just a part of an artist who has found a way to express himself. And he's making some money off of it too, and he's paying restitution. So from my standpoint, I, I think that we need to look on other aspects aspects of our judicial system, not even in terms of how it holds creatives accountable, but just how our society holds people accountable, you know, point blank. I don't think it would, that point would have anything to, to do with Vibes Cartel himself. So what you're saying in effect is that um, uh, Vibes Cartel is, um, is dealing with the hands that, uh, he's, he's playing with the hands that he's dealt with. Um, he's not um, doing anything that anybody else wouldn't do. Um, it, it's the responsibility of the Jamaican judiciary uh, to decide if he will be allowed to uh, participate uh, and continue to produce music or not. And also that uh, your contention also is that he's also by doing by producing music, is uh, is being rehabilitated into uh, eventually he will be rehabilitated into the society. Uh, but uh, even more importantly is that he's, uh, he's contributing to uh, the welfare and the well-being of, uh, of the families of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the victims. Um, some people might argue that um, that's a very convenient way to look at it, but um, the, the, what incarceration serves is, uh, is, is supposed to serve as a punishment. Uh, and that um, if you are able to continue living life uh, like you you were before you got incarcerated, that uh, that is, on its own is not uh, punishment. But I understand the fact that that will not ha things like that will not happen unless uh, the authorities allow it to happen. Uh